Good evening. I'm Jennifer Abreu. Thanks for joining us for Color 10 News on the Z. David has the night off. Well, the race for U.S. Senate between Attorney General Josh Hawley and U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill is already expected to get aggressive. Reporter Colin Lingo is looking back on recent interviews with these two candidates, specifically at the comments they both made condemning new hot button platforms in your right to know file tonight. Despite their already publicized differences, got, this is a historic election. Our way of life is at stake. There is one thing Attorney General Josh Hawley and U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill agree on that is, candidates should be transparent. Nobody has to own the lies and distortions they say about you? You see, each has at some point made claims of secret funding in this election cycle. She sold us out to the big money donors in her party. I want to know how he feels about dark money. Both calling out a type of hidden politics they know to be frowned upon. If you want to know where Senator McCaskill is on any issue, just ask where the liberal money is. That's where she'll be. That's not where Missouri is. The dirty money in politics, this dark money that is dominating uh, this particular Senate campaign. People don't like that. They don't like the idea that they can't find out who's paying for commercials. But like it or not, both candidates are being targeted by these third party ads, meaning in a way both are benefiting. Color 10 took a look at two frequently aired attack ads, one aimed at each candidate. We found neither were funded by either candidate's campaign, but instead two different political action committees. The ad against Holly, produced by the Senate Majority PAC, an organization that, according to its own website, was founded by aggressive Democrats with the sole mission of winning Senate races. And the ad against McCaskill, produced by the National Republican Senatorial Committee, an organization that, according to its website, is solely devoted to strengthening the Republican Senate majority. Now, both candidates are offering solutions. Let's let the people of Missouri decide this election. They need to hear from us directly. For Holly, the answer is debate. And for McCaskill, the answer is discernment on the part of the public. I don't care whether the ad is for me or against me. If you don't know who's paying for it, you shouldn't pay any attention to it. Colin Lingo, Color 10 News, Ozarks First. And speaking of the upcoming Senate race, Dr. Brian Calfano sits down with the KSGF morning show host Nick Reed to discuss last week's election results in this edition of Ozarks Tonight. Cut through the clutter with Cutter 10 News analyst Brian Calfano now on Ozarks Tonight. Good evening. Welcome to Ozarks Tonight. We're joined by Nick Reed, who is the morning show host over at 1041 KSGF. Nick, good evening to Hello. you. Thanks for being here, you and bet. I wanted to get you in as quickly as we could to talk about this past Tuesday's right. election result. Oh, that, that's right. That, that's right. That, that happened, right? It did primary happen. Primary election. Happen. And some really monumental decisions were made. I thought that I didn't expect, for instance, to see what we ended up seeing with Prop A right. and with the presiding commissioner race. Mm -hmm. I think the Senate essentially went the way that we thought it was going to with that Great. sorting out. But, but why don't you give us some of your pearls of wisdom here on any of these topics, any of the above? All right. Well, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what I think. Sure. Is that uh, Proposition A, right to work, as it's known, $15 million went into defeating it, and virtually nothing went into supporting it. It was very, very, very poorly executed from those who were supporters Why of Why is that, do you think? I think uh, a number of reasons. One, support for something like that usually is a very, very loose coalition as opposed to the unions that are, I mean, that's what unions do, right? I mean, they, they uh, you know, get together and they function as one unit. So it's sort of built in for them. Um, but a lot of times those who are more supportive of right to work are individual business owners and individual employees and some even within unions, but they don't want to get out there because they're part of unions. All right, the big enchilada in November, mm -hmm. Holly and McCaskill. Um, I can't think Crystal of... Crystal Ball, Nick. Right. Uh, I don't know. She's vulnerable. She is vulnerable. The most vulnerable Democratic mm -hmm. incumbent this year. Right. So I'm a big believer in um, what oftentimes can make the difference is the thing that you can't really quantify, and it's enthusiasm. So who, whose voters are most enthusiastic? And enthusiasm isn't necessarily always driven by positives. I think a lot of the enthusiasm for McCaskill is stick it to Trump by people who hate Trump, okay? Um, people who are enthusiastic about Holly, it's because they really, really don't like Claire McCaskill. I don't think either of them have an enthusiastic base because they really are enthusiastic about the two individuals. Josh Holly has never really come across as somebody that really wanted this. 
if he doesn't manage to create this emotional connection with uh, grassroots Republicans that he's really excited about this and really wants it, it's just, you've got to have that enthusiasm. What you does have he have to, to do? Because you talk to folks all the time mm -hmm. who are part of that grassroots Republican right. community. What does he have to do to make that connection? Uh, boy, this is going to sound like a real non am because it kind of is. I don't know that there's anything he can do. Sometimes it's personality. Uh, you may recall Al Gore when he ran. They had all these acting coaches come in. Yeah. Some people just don't have that dynamic personality, and Josh Hawley doesn't seem to really have that. Thanks so much for being yeah. here. Appreciate it. All right, that was our Dr. Brian Calfano for Ozarks Tonight. Last night, Branson Professional Firefighters Local 152 saved two people from a bungee ride after it backfired. Here's a picture of that ride where two riders were trapped over 100 feet in the air. Branson Crane assisted the firefighters. According to its Facebook page, Local 152 says it took almost two hours to lower the ride to the ground and free its occupants. While no one was injured, it will surely be a ride they will never forget. Truman Elementary students will be going back to school in style on Wednesday. This afternoon, Rogue Barber Company on West Walnut provided free haircuts for the kids before they return to the classroom. Our Bria Douglas has this story that scores a 10 with Color 10 tonight. It's a Sunday afternoon, a time when barbers at Rogue Barber Shop should be enjoying their day off. Instead, they're making sure kids are looking sharp before heading back to school. It's one of those things that, you know, parents don't even think of until probably the last minute. And, you know, you got everything ready, your backpack, your pencils and whatnots, and then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, my kid's hair. That's where owner Ryan Mulcahy and his team are stepping in to help. After he was approached with the idea by his neighbor, who was a teacher at Truman School, Ryan decided to offer free haircuts to the kids. If you're the kind of person that, it, given this opportunity, and you say no, I don't want to be a, your friend at all. <laughs> Over in another chair, Eli Clark is digging his new look. That was pretty cool. I think it's a very good step to take. Uh, when you're looking good, you're, you're walking a little bit taller and you feel, uh, I don't know, a little bit better about yourself. <laughs> in Springfield, Bria Douglas, Color 10 News, Ozarks First. A sweet story. Thanks, Bria. Well, if you need a job, head over to Bass Pro on Tuesday. The Missouri Job Center on East Sunshine will host a hiring event for the outdoor shops August 14th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Interviews will be held for the call center, distribution center, and retail store positions. Bring your resume and be ready to interview on the spot. Well, let's head on over to weather now. Jamie, what does the work week look like? Well, it looks like it's going to be a week where we're going to have to use the umbrella at times. We do have wet weather in the forecast. Not every day, but most days there's going to be a pretty good shot at some much needed rainfall. I'll have that forecast for you coming up next. You're watching Color 10.